What's the one above it? Mean, median, and moan comparisons. Um, some people get jammed up on this one in particular because this one where you do the computations, mean, median, and mode computations, is much more straightforward. So, And I, I already did a video on that one. I don't think anybody has any trouble with this one. But this one where you're doing some comparisons, there are some difficulties. Now, when you do this one, it usually unlocks this one right here. Okay? And so um, hopefully you guys can see that. Let me just double check. Yes, you can. Okay, cool. So this problem, when you get it, it's going to ask you a series of logical questions about this data set and this data set here. You don't need the calculator for this problem. You just need to think about it a little bit. And um, it, there, there are very sneaky questions in here that this one, every now and then, you'll get one that's just like, I mean, you get it right, and you get it right, and then you get it wrong, <laughs> and then you get it right again, and a right, and a wrong, and so when I go through and I look through the course statistics, there are a lot of people who get jammed up on this one, so I want to cover this one real quick. Okay, so <clears throat> here's a problem. I'll show you the explanation in just a sec, but I'll walk you through it here real fast. So over the past several months, customers at Stymie's department store have been asked to fill out customer satisfaction surveys. In the surveys, customers rate their shopping experience on a scale of one, 0 to 100, and here are 24 recent ratings. Blah, blah, blah. So here's our histogram. Okay, so notice it doesn't ask you to draw it this time. It's just going to ask you to start making inferences based upon this data set and this set right here. Okay, well, I mean they're the same. This is just a visualization of this data. All right, so for this data, and so question A is almost always the same, although there are two different types of questions that you can get here, but it's going to ask you things that are roughly the same. For these data, which measures the central tendency take on more than one value? So quick pro tip right here. So you, you, you can never have more than one mean or one median. So never answer those two. <laughs> okay. I mean, think about it. When you, a mean is a calculated thing and a median is just counting in and finding that middle number. There's no way you could have more than one of those. The only one of these that matters in this case is are there multiple modes? Okay. And so notice in this problem, they're kind of cool about it. They actually put the numbers in order. So it's usually pretty easy to put to poke out your mode. Here we go, right here. I've got a mode right here, 53, 53, 53. So remember, mode is most occurring number. Okay. But in this case in particular, I don't have another mode in here that occurs more often than once. Okay. So if I had two modes or three modes, then I would check this one here because notice in this it says which of these measures of central tendency take on more than one value. So the only one would be a mode. But in this case, I only have one mode. And that's like a sneaky little thing. But again, the answer on this one would be this guy right here. None of these measures. Um, oh, I'm in demonstration mode. I can't, I can't check that, but I would check that. <laughs> All right. So the next question on here, B, is almost always the same. Suppose that the measurement 88, the largest measurement in the data set, were replaced by 98. Which measures of central tendency would be affected by the change? Okay. So pro tip here, mean will always change if you tinker with the data even a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> so unless you replace any value with an exact same value, all right, in its exact same position, um, which is what it would be, the, the mean wouldn't change in that case. In all other cases, including every time in this one, whenever you get this question, mean is automatically going to change. So always, always check this box right here. The mode might change if this highest number was actually your mode. Okay. So say like this was 88 and 88 and 88. If I replace this one with a 98, well, then my mode would change. Okay. Because I have three 53s here. So that would be my new mode. All right. So just uh, that it's sometimes it rarely gets you on that one just pay attention to that the one that's usually a tougher question in this one is whether or not the median actually changes the answer to that one is always no okay because if I'm just going to replace this number okay with a different number the middle number is going to be absolutely unaffected okay absolutely unaffected so the only question on this one that you should be always checking this never check this sometimes check this that's the trick to part B in this okay so this next one, C, suppose that starting with the original data set, the smallest measurement were removed. Which measures of central tendency would be changed from those of the original data set? Choose all that apply. This is the tricky one, and a lot of people get jammed up on this one. So because now, if we actually take the smallest number, 14, and just remove it from the data set, our N, the number in the sample, 24, would
would go down to 23 at this point in time. And so we know that if we tinker with any of the data, the mean automatically changes. So click that one check this one does your median change all right so right now at 24 we would count in 12 all right so 12 is half of 24 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 my medians right between these two guys right here okay but now if I chop this one out okay um, it's actually at 11 and a half all right so it's at the middle number with 11 on either side so it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. See, it would change, all right, because it would fall exactly on this 50, all right, rather than being between 50 and 53. I hope that makes sense, okay? But whenever you change this number here from an even to an odd, remember it's going to go from a number that is not in the data set to one that actually is in the data set. Now, the sneaky thing here is sometimes your mode is in here. So it'll be like, say like these were 53s as well. So 53, 53, 53, 53, 53. If I remove a number, my middle number is still going to be 53. All right, so the median might not change in this one. You always have to watch for that because Alex loves to pull that sneaky little trick on you, okay? And then this last uh, question that you get here, D, which of the following best describes the distribution of the original data? Choose only one. This is probably the easiest one, okay? So you have negatively skewed, positively skewed, and roughly symmetrical. This one is roughly symmetrical. It's bell-shaped, okay? So whenever you see a bell shape in there, that's roughly symmetrical. Positively skewed and negatively skewed will look a little bit different. It'll have like this hump on one side and then it'll have a tail. All right, the skew always points towards the tail, okay? And so if this one had a hump here and a skinny tail going this way, it would be positively skewed. How do I know it's positively skewed? Because the numbers increase. Okay, as I point towards the tail, if the numbers is at the tail, so these, these base numbers here are higher <clears throat> than where the hump is, then okay, it's positively skewed. The opposite would be negatively skewed. We also call that right skewed. So right skewed data is positively and left skewed. Left skewed data is negatively skewed. Okay, I hope that makes sense. It'll make a lot more sense in the future when we get to the section of, of the class that actually deals with distributions. Um, although most of the time we'll be dealing with symmetrical distribution, the bell shape. But every now and then, there are a couple problems down the road where we'll deal with the skew as well. So if I check my explanation here, all right, so my answers would be none, mean, mean and median in that case, okay, because our median, remember, so our data set went from an even number to an odd number, meaning that it went from a number that's not actually in the data set, it would be between two numbers, to one that is absolutely in the data set, so that one would have mean would have been median, our mode wouldn't have changed, and then of course we would have been roughly symmetrical. Okay, so it looks like this. I hope that helps. This problem can be a pain, all right? There are a couple different variations on it, but this one's this one here covers just about 90% of the stuff that you would see. Now sometimes it'll ask you slightly different questions in each one of these, but this one's almost always the same. This one's almost always the same. Sometimes in this one it'll ask you which one of these values doesn't exist, okay? The, every data set has a mean, every data set has a median. The question is, does it have a mode? Okay, and that's if it has one mode, two modes, or a million modes. <laughs> okay, if it has a mode, you couldn't click that one. All right, but sometimes data doesn't have a mode. All right, there's not a number that records twice. That's actually much more common than you think. <clears throat> especially in real data out there and then sometimes down here you get one that will actually ask you a rather confusing question about which one is higher the mean or the median in negatively or positively skewed data um, if you get that one just think about it okay so a skew will actually always move your mean but your median will always stay the same okay your median will always stay the same because the skew I mean the median is going to be okay but if it's got a skew where you get an outlier that's way out here on this one then your mean is going to move away from that median okay and so just think about that one logically all right if it's right skewed it's going to pull that median to the right okay or if it's positively skewed it's going to pull that mean higher than the median and if it's the other way then it'll pull it lower okay um 
if 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 you get jammed up on that one, ping me. Okay, so I I will um. I'll see if I can find maybe like one or two examples of that. I want to do like maybe a, a little quick video on them at some point in time. If you get jammed up on it, just let me know. Okay. So this one here, um, we'll, we'll, we'll move on from this one, but just watch out for this one. Me, meaning and moan comparisons. All right. So in the future, we'll have more logic problems like this. Okay. Yay. <laughs> so I can't wait, Pat. 